this is really one thing Rider and also ReShopper are great at. So there are a lot of inspections that help, can help us to uh, avoid potential errors in our code. Uh, we don't have to worry too much. It will always help us. It's like a like like a good pair programmer basically. And here I have a very good example for um, working with enumerables. And maybe you already see the strings has a little squiggly already. And that is because we are getting past uh, we are getting past the strings as an iron removable. So we have no idea if it might be constructed via um, chained link calls or if it might be already a list. But in any case, um, if we hover over that, we can see that here we have a possible multiple enumeration. And everyone uh, who has run into that situation probably knows that those kind of things are sometimes really headaching. And it's just really great to have someone uh, um, informing you about that. And what we can do, of course, is either to enumer enumerate the list or um, to an array, actually. Another thing uh, we have right here, so with order by descending, I remember when I when I got, got more familiar with link, uh, this was one of the first mistakes I did uh, because the order by will do the first uh, sorting, but if we add another order by, then we basically override that sorting that we previously added. So instead, what we should do is, and we can see it here in the inspection as well, uh, possibly we meant to type then by instead, and then I can just uh, fix that. Um, and the instead, ah, then by, sorry. Um, and the inspection will go away. All right, then of course, um, .NET and also C Sharp, they are developing or evolving very rapidly. And sometimes it's hard to keep track of all the different language features that have been added. And uh, that's something I, I recently also read in the, in the Twitter comments. Uh, sometimes ReSharper and Rider are really great to actually teach us also a bit about uh, C Sharp. So for instance, we might have a, have a method here which calculates the previous to last element of our array. And prior to C sharp, um, uh, prior to C sharp eight, um, we basically had to use the length and then subtract uh, two. But with the new language feature, we can use the index from end expression, and that will just look like that. So that's just an opportunity uh, where Rider helps you to make your code also more elegant. Another thing we have here, so using statements can actually be converted to using, um, no, sorry, using uh, statements can actually be converted to using declarations. And again, we can use the uh, bulk fix and we will choose to do this only in the current method. Then uh, also a couple of async uh, uh, features have been added like async disposable and all that stuff. So we could also decide to make our um, method async then uh, additionally, we can also use the await using uh, or the await modifier to actually make it make it async. And here we are using the bright line method. And Rider knows there's also an overload which is async, and we can also confirm that. And that is basically both more elegant and also way more uh, readable. Um, here we have one thing working with I, as, um, async enumerables. So uh, whenever we're getting past the cancellation token, what we should actually do is to pass that cancellation token with the with cancellation uh, method uh, for the enumeration of that async enumerable. Um, but it doesn't stop there. Even if we have a custom method with, where we do a yield return, uh, and which is a async, then we can also for those methods decide to pass the cancellation token. Uh, this is basically depending on the attribute that we have here, the enumerated cancellation uh, token. And this attribute, I will mention it briefly, um, is, sorry, is part of the, uh, is part of the, 
JetBrains annotations package, and that helps to add a bit more. Um, where is it? It should be here. It's not. Um, it's part of the JetBrains annotations package. Or maybe I'm just uh, too nervous to actually find it, but it's part of the annotations package, and that can help ReSharper and Rider to um, even make more. Uh, smart suggestions around our code. So Mar Martin will uh, add a comment right after me, I think, also regarding that. Um, then let's switch over to nullability also. So everyone probably has heard about the uh, nullable reference types. And um, we can, in, in this case, I have an enabled uh, nullable reference types only for the current document. And then and that's the great thing. Uh, we can go to one error uh, just by using a shortcut. And this is, you see, I just pressing the shortcut is basically uh, next error uh, in solution. And that will bring me to the next error. And from here I can fix it. So for instance, in this case, I can make, since I'm getting the, um, the middle name is nullable in this case. So I can change the type of the property that I'm assigning it to to have the nullable version of string as well. Then I can go to the next issue. Uh, this is actually just a, just a, a typing thing. Uh, but I want to go here to person. And here we have a method which basically ensures that person already uh, is not null and that it's not empty. And uh, there are some, some cases with attributes, how you can fix that. But I want, still want to show you uh, something to uh, express in our code base that we actually know that here we are not dealing with a null value. So we can either decide to use the, uh, I think it's called damnit op operator, or no, uh, null forgiving operator, <laughs> sorry. Um, but we could also use, for instance, uh, conditional access or stuff like that, or maybe even a fallback. Um, something else, and that's really interesting because there is another way of enabling nullable reference types. So we can also decide to only enable annotations here. And uh, this is interesting because in that case, we won't get the compiler um, uh, issues from, from the C-sharp compiler. Uh, but it will only treat the yeah all the annotations like the nullable reference types etc the attributes and what's really interesting is let's remove that again uh, in this case we have actually no error although uh, the single or default could possibly return null right but in the uh, annotations context what happens is that Rider will evaluate the information that it gets through the nullable reference types and attributes, but it will still enhance that with our own nullability an uh, analysis. So in this case, we know uh, we can possibly return a nullable value, although here we have person, and then we could just fix that as well. Okay, uh, one thing that I also really like, and Matt briefly covered already uh, the closures, is the Heap Viewer plugin. That's a plugin we can uh, install through the, uh, through the menu right here, through the settings. And we can see it is right here, the Heap Allocation Viewer. And what that will do, especially in uh, today's times where uh, .NET Core is pushed so far to its uh, performance limits <laughs> almost, um, it really helps us to identify places where allocations happen. So for instance, here in this method, I'm getting uh, past a list of string. For the first four each, we see there's no underlining or anything. But in the second, since this list is treated as ironumable, we will see there's a possible uh, enumerator allocation, uh, which will happen uh, with the for each. Another example are um, method groups and uh, lambda closures, like we had already. Uh, we can see, for instance, here we have a delegate allocation, which captures the, uh, the string parameter and the this reference. Um, but we can also see it um, when objects are being boxed. So for instance, we have a method 
uh, E, which takes an I comparable object. And we pass the number and we can see since this uh, receives an interface, it must be boxed and can't be passed uh, through, through the stack. Also, we can see it here with string uh, concatenation that allocations will happen. Another one of my favorite um, plugins is the Cognitive Complexity plugin. And many of you probably have heard at least about the Cyclomatic Complexity uh, uh, metric. This metric basically tells us how complex, uh, given a certain um, um, metric, um, how, how complex a certain method is or, or function, etc. The only difference is that cyclomatic complexity usually has has a few um, not so um, how to say not so smart assumptions about the code. So, for instance, a list uh, or a method which iterates over a collection three times um, will have the same value as we would iterate it one by one. So this is, uh, or what I actually meant was, if, if, if we have the uh, enumeration sequentially. So uh, this would be the same as we would do it like that, for instance. But going back, what cognitive complexity tells us is how hard it is to read a certain method. And here in this case, we see it will uh, tell us it's quite complex. If we click that uh, item, we can also see um, how much of impact a certain statement has. So for instance, the first only has an impact of one. The second, since it is nested, already has, has an impact of two. And the third, very bad, uh, already had, has an impact of three. Um, what you see here in the next method is if I'm using um, syntactic sugar of the language, like in this case, the uh, link query language, uh, which basically achieves the same result. But if I use those shortcuts, then I'm getting away with a, a very, with a much lower uh, complexity metric, since this is basically uh, easier to read instead of indented code and, and all that uh, things. Here we have another method uh, which works with the dictionary, a key and a default value. And let's assume the dictionary could be null, then we might initialize it. Uh, with an if statement, but here uh, we can already see Ryder uh, suggests to use the uh, compound assignment like that. Um, a few weeks ago, I didn't even know this this parameter uh, this operator existed um, to make it more clean. And we already have seen that uh, we already decreased from uh, 40. Uh, sorry, we already decreased from 40 percent to. 20% uh, and here we can do it again and instead of uh, the if statement we can use the ternary um, boolean operator and then we finally have a complexity of uh, zero because this is way easier to read I guess. Okay, um, using the cognitive complexity plug in with his inspections or any of the other inspections that we have, sometimes you might run in the situation where you want to suppress that you actually get a warning. Like in this time, um, I might be okay with the implementation of the method. method. Then I can just go ahead, um, go to the inspection. In this case, element exceeds cognitive complexity threshold. And I can decide to disable that in that particular case uh, with a comment. So I can decide to do it once with the comment, which is what I want to do here. Uh, but I could also do it for the whole uh, file, which is handy, for instance, if you're doing with uh, a naming where you can't work or where you have to use a certain naming. Um, or we can use disable and restore comments so that it's only for a certain uh, scope. In this case, I will go ahead with the uh, disable once comment. Um, but what's interesting also is that we can share those settings across our across our team. So, for instance, if I'm not interested in, to, in that loop can be converted into lin link expression, then I can go here, configure the inspection severity. 
And what I do then is to say, I don't want to show that and then save it to the team shared layer. And as soon as I did that, I can see also in the uh, local changes, and I think I have to refresh, uh, that the dot settings file, which is usually also committed to the uh, VCS, uh, has been changed. We have a new entry here. Um, and then also my fellow team members uh, will benefit from that. Uh, that's actually a really great example if we do the if we if we are dealing with the multiple enumeration in that case it might be uh, um, possible to consider if I want to um, raise that to an error for instance although it is not in sync with the compiler but it's still uh, a very good candidate uh, to uh, think about it what I also want to mention is that those inspections uh, are not only a feature that you can use while developing on your local machine, but you can also in, um, introduce that into your CI pipeline. So I've written a blog post a couple of uh, years ago already about establishing a zero warning policy, and that will also cover how you can integrate um, scanning for inspections into your CI pipeline. So uh, in Team City. It, it also works with, with uh, uh, other CI systems, but in TeamCity, we have a predefined step already. We choose the uh, solution uh, uh, file for that. Then the uh, analysis will run. We can also add additional failure conditions for the build. So for instance, if the metric changes, and even if it's just the warnings, uh, then we can make the build uh, fail. And then we also have, especially in TeamCity, we have a nice UI uh, to browse for different files and see what kinds of inspections are shown there. 